Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is king. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, it's a glorious day. It's a glorious day to worship King Jesus because this is the day that the Lord has made for us to glorify Him and honor His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, King Jesus. Because you're worthy of all the praise, of all the honor, and of all the glory. Hallelujah. We give it to you, Jesus. We give it to you, Jesus. We lift up our voices unto you today, God. Thank you for this glorious day, God, for us to worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's worship him together. Let's worship him. Here we go. Now who would carry that kind of way? It was my tomb. Y'all know it. When I met you. Hey, come on. See, I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried. Too high. It was my tomb. Come on, we met him. Till I met you. Y'all ready? You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Hey! Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. Let's go. And I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Come on, y'all. Put a hand together like this. Y'all ready? I needed rescue. My sins were heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Hey. But when you call my name. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Yeah. 
to praise the Lord. Come on, I feel like we need to sing this bridge again. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break right now at the weight of your glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. And when you call my name, Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you call my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Hallelujah. Those hands. Everybody, let's clap 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 those hands. Everybody, let's move those feet. 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 When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. something you think that you couldn't do before. Move your arm, move your shoulder, move your legs. Come on, because when you move your body, when you move your feet, the darkness has to flee. Come on, go ahead, do something in faith that you couldn't do before. Let's go. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness
praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon. My praise is a weapon.
generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Hallelujah. All who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the
Your name, it stands above them all. 
praise, honor, and worship today. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up our hands to the Lord. We just love and worship, glorify Jesus today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue our worship with communion this morning. This will be our first opportunity of communion in the new year. We celebrate today the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is King of kings and Lord of lords. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Just as we, we, if the ushers would help me with this pulpit here. Thank you there, Randy, if you don't mind. Praise God. Um, just, for, just for our visitors, some of, these, uh, some of these words we're singing, Yahweh is the, is the Hebrew transliteration of the word Jehovah. So it's a Hebrew word. And uh, Yeshua HaMashiach is what? Yeshua is the Hebrew word for Jesus. HaMashiach meaning the anointed one or Messiah. Amen? So we are, we are uh, just worshiping the Lord in, in Hebrew. Hallelujah. How many knows that the first part of the Bible is written in Hebrew? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you never know. Some people might think, what in the world are they talking about? It's just a simple ex explanation. Yeshua, Jesus. Praise God. In 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 11, Paul gives us the writing about communion. And uh, so I want to read this scripture and then we'll, we'll, we'll move forward with communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul writes, For I received from the Lord that which also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. He takes the bread, he breaks it, gives thanks, then he breaks it, and then he, he distributes uh, the pieces to the different disciples, and they eat. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And so there are two different elements of the communion. Number one is the bread. Number two is the cup or the, the wine, which is really grape juice. And, uh, but, but there's a benefit to each element individually it's important we understand what we're doing we're not just going through a religious ritual we are we are focusing refocusing we're remembering jesus remembering him remembering his sacrifice it's a moment of refocusing our attention on what is what is the theme of, of the bible what is the theme especially of the whole bible obviously the the, the new testament and, and, the, and what God would have to be the theme of our life, and that is what Jesus did for us, what Jesus accomplished for us. And then as a result of that, that we live today, and we have today a covenant relationship with God. Amen. Our, our relationship with God is not based on feelings. It's not based on emotions. Even though in this glorious walk with the Lord, there's a lot of feelings and a lot of emotion. But our, our relationship isn't built on emotions. Is it built on feelings? It's built on a covenant. It's built on a blood covenant. And so what we have recorded for us in the New Testament or New Covenant are the words of that covenant. Those are, those are decrees, kingdom decrees of what God has spoken to us and about us and over us. Amen? And, and in that, there's a lot of glorious, glorious privilege that God has given us and obviously with that privilege comes responsibility that we be the body of Christ that God called us to be. Amen? So the body, the bread is broken. Jesus said, this is my body, this is my flesh broken for you. And so when we eat that bread, what is the benefit of the bread? The bread being the body of Jesus broken for us. We eat the bread. We're, we're partaking of his body, and therefore we receive strength. We receive healing in our bodies, amen, there's a provision of healing for every person. Every person. There's a provision of healing for every person. And uh, the Old Testament 
The Old Testament type of the Passover is, a, is, is an example of the communion. There were two elements in the Passover. God said to, it, to Moses, you take the lamb, you kill the lamb, you shed the blood, put, it, put all the blood in a bowl. But then, but then he says, you take the body of that lamb and you roast it over, over, over an open fire. And he told him how it was to be prepared. But then they were to eat the flesh of the lamb. Eat the flesh of the lamb. And what was the effect when Israel ate the flesh of that lamb? They were healed. They were healed. Amen. They were healed. So that by the time Israel gets across the Red Sea, the first revelation that God gives them, Exodus 15, 26, God says he gives them his name, which is a covenant name. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you. The word is in a tense that means I have, be, I have begun to heal you, I am healing you, and I'm continuing to heal you. God says, from this moment forward, I'm your doctor. I'm your physician. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says in, I think it's Psalms 105, God says, the Bible says that when God brought Israel out of, out of Egypt, he brought them out with silver and gold, and the Bible said there was not one feeble person among their tribes. 400 years of slavery, beaten, abused, all of that. And yet when they came out of Egypt, nobody's limping, nobody's blind, nobody's sick. Three million of them, and nobody's sick. None of them are sick. They're all strong. Hallelujah. What, what made them strong? They ate the flesh of the lamb. Now, we understand that. So we, we today are going to eat, we're going to eat the flesh of the lamb. It's, it's bread, but it's a type, it's a, it's, a, it's a symbol of his very body. Amen? And I think the body of Jesus, we're eating the flesh of Jesus. We're not just eating the, pre, we're not eating the pre-resurrection. We're eating the post-resurrection body of Jesus. Come on. Man, that stuff is radioactive. <laughs> it's, 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 it's infused with glory. It's infused with resurrection life, infused with resurrection power. Hallelujah. And you're going you're gonna to put that in your mouth, amen, and you're going to swallow it. And when it gets to your stomach, it's going to be dispersed to every cell and tissue of your body. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so you're, gonna, you're not going to limp into the new year. You're going to run. You're going to come running into the new year. New strength. New strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just declare healing over every person in this house. I declare strength in your body. I declare, I, I, I declare freedom. Freedom. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. So they ate the flesh of the lamb, but that's not all they did. You know the story. They took the blood. They applied it across the, you know, around the doorposts of the door. And then when the Bible said that when the, when the, the there, there's, there's some descriptions of what passed through Egypt, and some of them are different. One of them says it was a death angel. Another description says it was a plague. And I, I don't have the scripture right in front of me, but if you, you'll search it out, the Bible said it was a plague. It was a plague that came in. It, it was, it was uh, let's use this word, it was... Uh, <laughs> It was programmed, this plague was programmed to kill every firstborn in, in the whole land. And it, had, it, it, it showed no, no respect for, for Israel or Egypt or anybody. It's going to kill every firstborn. But here's the deal. God says, you take this blood, you take this blood, and you apply it to the door. You apply it over the door. Now stop right there. I don't want to get real deep here. But I love the scripture. Romans, you've heard me teach on, on Friday morning discipleship. Romans chapter 5, verse 12, and then verse 14 says that from Adam to Moses, from Adam to, it's in, it's, put that up there, Romans 5, 12. No, Romans 5, 14. From Adam to Moses, from Adam to Moses, nevertheless, death reigned. Death reigned means what? What does reign mean? It means it reigned as a king. There was a sovereignty to death. Death killed whoever he wanted. Death reigned from Adam to who? To Moses. What happened with Moses that changed? 
Something changed with Moses. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. What happened? Moses got a revelation. He got a revelation of the blood. He got a revelation of applying the blood. <laughs> and so therefore, death's power, death's sovereignty was broken. Death lost its authority. So death starts walking through the camp, and, and for the first time since Adam, do you get that? The first time since Adam, death is walking, and all of a sudden death stops, and he can't go in that house. He said, I, I, I can't, and he, and he passes over. He has to go around that house. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so those houses where the blood was applied were protected. The plague couldn't go in that house. Hallelujah. Now, my friend, that blood, that blood of those lambs that were killed in Egypt were, were animal blood. They were simply types and shadows of the lamb that was to come. Hallelujah. You and I are not applying animal blood to our house. Come on now. What are we doing? By faith, with our confession, we are applying the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus to our house, to our family. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. And if the type of the blood of Jesus could break the kingship, could break the sovereignty of death, I'm telling you, the literal blood of Jesus, how much more? How much more? How much more? Praise the Lord. So today, we today are eating the flesh of the lamb and we're drinking the blood. Symbolically, by faith. Amen. What we're about to do right now is more, let me use this word, is more real, is more substantive than what Moses did that protected them and broke them out of Egypt. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody raise up one hand, say, say, thank you, Jesus. I receive healing. I receive strength. Say this. Say, I speak the blood. Say, I confess my faith in the shed blood of Jesus over my life, spiritually, physically, and every area. Say, I speak the blood of Jesus over my house, over my family, and we are free. Say, we are free. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I want to declare today that even though a plague may pass through the land, I said even though a plague may pass through the land, I declare that it will pass over my house. I declare it's going to pass over your house. It's going to pass you by. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a no trespassing sign. Come on, there's a divine Holy Ghost, no trespassing sign on your front door that said you can't come in here. You can't enter this house. You are forbidden. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And everybody say this out loud. Say, I've been exempted. So I have a divine exemption I'm not getting sick hallelujah hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Amen. Now, that's covenant. That's covenant. I have a covenant with God made through Jesus. Amen. Praise God. By His grace, He brought me into the covenant. He brought me in. So therefore, I have a covenant relationship with God. I was a Gentile. I had no right. I had no right to the promises of covenant. I had no, no place. But Jesus, by His grace, He redeemed me and He brought me in. And so this morning, we're participating in a covenant meal, remembering, realigning ourselves, re refocusing ourselves on that covenant, reminding ourselves, reminding God. You see, well, God never forgets. That's true, but if you read the Bible, you'll, fi you'll find that many times when it came to covenant, the Bible said, and God remembered. It said, and God re Matter of fact, when, before God brought Israel out of Egypt, the Bible says these words, and God remembered Abraham. Did he forget Abraham? No, but it's a covenant word. God remembered Abraham. God said, I got a covenant with that man, and therefore I've got to bring these people out no matter what it takes. Amen? I remember God remembers, and the devil remembers. Amen. We're going to enforce it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is not just some dry ritual we're going through. Whew, glory to God. We're going to live and not die. We're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. 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 We're not only going to survive 2024, we're going to dominate. We're going to dominate. We're going to dominate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let's all stand up on our feet. We'll begin in the back. Those of you in the back, come down the side aisles. Get the elements. The ushers here will help you. And then return back down the middle aisle. Once everyone has the elements in their hand, then we'll... Then we'll share together. Okay, start coming.
Amen. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. 24, he said, Take, eat. These are the words of Jesus. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let's receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Then he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessing. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give you glory, praise, and honor. Worship it to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I declare you blessed today, blessed with the blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Just take, shake hands and fellowship there close by you there for just a few moments. Greet our visitors. We have some visitors, guests here today. Introduce yourself to them. Make them welcome. God bless you.
perfection. Pastor's going to be talking more about the fast, but um, it starts today, so I hope you're ready. Ruby, what are you doing? Just journaling about what the Bible says. I think there's a class for the ladies about this. Oh, that's cool. I think I have it written down right here. Don't forget about healing school and the prophetic school. Healing school is next Saturday at 10 a.m. The prophetic school is on the 27th. You need to register. It takes $10, but you get to eat lunch. Happy New Year, and we hope it snows. <laughs> I'm going to get back to journaling. Wow! Ah! I'll just put on my headphones, okay? There it is. Where's my pants? Great morning, Cornerstone. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So how many of y'all actually read what was on the screen and Stop looking at Ruby, right? Anybody read it and really get the information, or are you just admiring how cute she is, right? Amen, amen. Well, this morning, uh, we've come to take up the, this morning's offering, and um, I'm going to be very brief. So if the ushers would like to go ahead and come, I'll share. We're going to come from Mark, the uh, 10th chapter, verse 20 through 22. The man said to Jesus, the teacher, I have carefully obeyed these laws since my youth. Jesus fixed his gaze upon the man with tender love and said to him, yet there is still one thing you're lacking. Go sell all you have and give the money to the poor. Then all your treasure will be in heaven. After you've done this, come back and walk with me. Completely shocked by Jesus' answer, he turned and walked away very sad, for he was very rich. So this morning, briefly, I'm going to mention to you something that the young people talk about, and that is, don't just talk about it, be about it. Don't just talk about it, be about it. See, because the young people, they're looking for real-life examples, right? They don't want hypocrisy. They don't want... Do as I say, not as I do. They want you to walk the walk that you're talking. So they'll say, don't just talk about it, be about it. So Jesus has just given the man an ethical commandments and tells him that if he does all these things, he can enter into the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, like we do when God tells us something and we're already on track with it, we get kind of a little proud of ourselves. And he says, you know, yes. But I've been obedient to all these things since my youth. And he said, indeed, you have, but there's something that's lacking, there's something that's missing. And so we challenged him on the first commandment. Perceiving that he worshiped and idled his wealth and his social status, Jesus tell him to sell his goods and follow him. So but the man's not satisfied, so he refuses and he goes away with his riches. So having seen the true nature of his prideful confidence, this man is bluntly denied the possibility of entering the kingdom on his own merit. Hmm. He preferred to worship his money rather than worshiping God. 
So let us never be found professing Christ while remaining in a mindset of worshiping things. So don't just talk about it. Be about it. So none of us, I don't think, has been asked to sell everything that we've had. But we have been called to lay aside every idol that we have. So we must not all stop relying. So we must stop relying on ourselves, stop relying on what we have, and embrace the grace of God. And he's called us to do this. So I'll just share a little testimony about our, our oldest daughter, Camise. So while she was home for, uh, for her Christmas break, we had one of our father-daughter chats, and she tells me, she says, Pops, this is the first year that I have tithed 100% of my salary. She said, I almost slipped up. I was going, I got paid uh, last Friday. I was going to get gas. She said, I was at the gas pump. And I remember I had not paid my tithes because she said she has a commitment to not pay, but to give her tithes before she makes any purchase once she gets paid. So she said, I'm at the gas pump. She said, so I had to get back in my car. I had to go on the church app, and I had to give. So she got to the point where she just didn't talk about it. She was being about it. And that's what God is asking of us. It does not matter what it is. We just have to stop talking about it one day one day we come into 2024 and we have these lofty you know ideas of what we want to accomplish and yes it's great to have dreams and goals and aspirations and to write them down and pursue them but at some point in time when you say I want to lose weight you got to stop talking about it and you got to be about it right when we say we want to save more money then we got to stop that frivolous spending and we just got to stop talking about it and we got to be about it when we say, I want to go on a mission trip, been my lifelong thing to go on a mission trip, we'll stop talking about it and be about it. There's opportunities. Whatever it is that we've been talking about that we know the Lord has called us to, we've just simply got to stop talking about it. Because if we're not making progress towards it, then we need to just stop talking about it anyway. Because people are looking and eventually they want to see some action out of it. So we've already prayed this morning, and God's already laid on our heart what we're supposed to give this morning, what we're going to contribute, and what we're going to contribute to. So I'm going to stop talking about it so you can be about it. Father God, we thank you on this morning for your people. We thank you for your gift. We thank you for the givers. And Lord, on this morning, as all hearts and minds are clear and set on purpose for what you have commanded us to do on this morning, Lord, we simply turn it all over onto you. So we will not just be hearers only, Father God. We will not be talkers only, Father God, but we will be doers for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So while they're taking it up, at this time we're going to bring up Apostle Jonathan Morgan. Yeah, amen. How many of you appreciate Pastor Dwayne? Give him a hand of appreciation. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Wow. Hallelujah. I'm glad those phones don't break. I dropped mine so many times. It's amazing. They can take that abuse. Praise the Lord. Uh, last Sunday, our, we, I felt directed of the Lord to to redirect our, our, uh, our building fund offering, as you know, toward supporting, supporting Israel. And, uh, you know, be honest with you, I, I want to just, I want to put this clear so that you understand that God speaks to us. The only, the only struggle, the only struggle we have is, is, Laura, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure that's you? And, uh, and when we, we're sure, then, then we can move forward with confidence and just do what God told us. And, and thank God it was the biggest 
building fund offering of the year. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's $33,775. Amen. Amen. I want to say my appreciation to uh, Ted Abrams, who I consulted with in helping me find reputable uh, ministers in Israel to give through. Also, uh, Andre Van Zell helped, helped us. And uh, I appreciate Ted and Barb. They've spent a lot of time in Israel. And so they, they knew one of the brothers personally. He's a pastor of what's called Christ Church there in, in Israel. Uh, just put that, that, that thing up there. there. There's the three ministries. We divided the money between these three ministries. We've sown it all already. Let me know when you got it in your hand, you better get rid of it. Amen. And what, what we, we did, we, you know, spent some time diligently searching. Uh, tikkun. Uh, matter of fact, you could, if you write that down, you, could, you can look up these ministries. They all have websites, and you can see what they do and what kind of ministry they do. Some of them are more focused on some areas than others. Uh, you know, one, one, one of the things that they do, and I think maybe all of them do this, but Messiah's mandate, I was particularly uh, struck with their support of uh, Israeli soldiers. And when the Israeli soldiers are not on the battlefield, then they they are responsible for their own uh, own upkeep, uh, food, lodging, all of that. Even though they're they're in the the, the, the you know the IDF or what, I think is what it's called. Uh, so so that they're they're helping feed them, helping to provide place to live, place to stay, mattresses and all that stuff, winter coats, uh, even even helping them buy uh, body armor boots winter coats so th those things are going on it, it, it their their armed forces works a little different than ours in that respect but uh cmj of israel that's 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 also christ that, that's the general kid can help me that's the umbrella but the christ church is is part of that and i met that pastor via zoom with ted the other day a uh, very humble godly man and then uh tents of mercy tikkun uh is is in Israel one of the branches of Tikkun is Tents of Mercy they have a huge operation of humanitarian aid uh, there in Israel so if you want to look those up you can check those out and and uh, we've done the research and you know your own personal giving if you want to help support Israel any of these three would be would be worthy of your your giving you can give online to any of these but we divided the 33,000 almost $34,000 between these these three ministries and and sowed it amen hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah and we did it with great joy hilariously we gave it praise the lord amen amen now also but also according to the bible the bible says whosoever sows bountifully will what reap bountifully so we we by faith are our number one again our highest joy is in the giving and in the benefit on that side of the giving but on our side we, we we're claiming a harvest right we're claiming a harvest because we sowed building fund money what was would have been allocated for building fund money and thank god i'm, th I'm happy about that is the biggest building fund offering of the year and so we sowed it and what are we expecting we're expecting a building amen we're expecting a building praise the lord hallelujah you know, the Bible talks about a hundredfold return. Amen? A hundredfold. I think about that. 33,000 times 100, that's, that's about 3 million. <laughs> I said, now we're talking. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But even if that was not on the table, that was not in the picture, just simply the benefit given to the people there is, is reward enough. Amen? Is reward enough. But... Jesus, all his goodness. He, you know, giving is one of those uh, commandments. We call it a commandment with promise. In other words, God said, give. That's not an option. That's a command. Give. Then he says, and it shall be given unto you. That's a promise. Amen. So in our obedience to giving, God's attached a promise to that. And I, I you know, and I've been at this for a, for a few years. Uh, pa Pastor Sherry and I have been pastoring for uh, close to I don't know if pastoring, ministry, full-time ministry for 40-plus years. Amen. 
And I can tell you, I stand as a testimony today that uh, the understanding the blessing of Abraham that is ours by grace, and then out of that place of being blessed, being a giver, hilarious, generous giver, will, will blow your mind. God will go beyond your expectation. He will do things that people will scratch their head and wonder, how did you do that? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, you know, when you first get started, oftentimes you don't have, you don't have all the money you may think you need. And the Lord spoke to me back in those days, and he said to me, he said to me, how much was the budget? What was the budget for John the Baptist, do you reckon? What do you think John the Baptist's budget was? I don't think he had a budget. He's eating locusts and wild honey. Amen? God said to me, so what do you think the budget was for the upper room, Acts chapter 2? What was their budget? I don't think they had one either. They're just sitting around praying. The Lord said to me, you don't need money. Now, you need money, but that's not the first thing you need. What you need is the move of God, the anointing. Amen? Then money will follow that. You don't start with money. You start with the anointing, the move of God. Amen? And if you sit around waiting for the money before you do anything, I'm going to tell you right now, you're never going to do nothing. I can testify to you today, every single, every, this is going to sound like I'm, I'm accusing the Lord, I'm not. Every single thing I've ever done for God, I didn't have the money to do it when he told me to do it. And he required me to step out to do it before the money came. And sometimes the money came at once, but most of the time it came as we learn to live, give us this day, our daily bread. One day at a time. One day at a time. Amen? But nevertheless, God is has abundantly blessed us, and we're blessed. We're blessed. I'm blessed. My family's blessed. The church is blessed, and I'm happy about that. Praise God. Amen. And so God wants you to prosper. I'm telling you right now. He wants you to prosper. Praise God. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. There's a young lady here that I would love to introduce to you. Uh, Hilda, right? Hilda, come up here. This is Hilda. And she was born in Jerusalem. And I want her to just say something to you real quick. Come. Can we go up there? Pastor Dwayne, help us. Yeah. I want everybody to see you. She came to me last, maybe it was last Sunday, sharing with me her, her history. And just tell us a little bit about your testimony. I was born in Jerusalem, and uh, I was about four years old, and we had, you know, in uh, the Jewish people, you know, had, they, they, uh, you know, they, they want, they came against us, because so I am an Arab, yeah. I'm an Arab. And, but we are Christians. That's very important. <laughs> so anyway, you know, they, they, you know, they started, you know, um, you know, just. <laughs> uh, oh, so, so the war came on and everything in 1948. No, this is 1948, the first, the first time. And then. You know, we had to leave. Uh, my my father and my, my whole family went, left over there, and you know, Jerusalem because we were in Jerusalem, and uh, and we had to go to um, you know to a different country. And then we came back because we thought we can, you know, go back to where we were living. My father went, and he wanted to look at the house that we had. But it was all messed up. And the Jewish people told him, get out. Well, then in 1967, it was something even 
worse, but in our condition, it was better. Because, you know, in 1967, there was the, uh, the Jews took over Jerusalem, the whole Jerusalem. And, uh, and I lived, we lived as a family in Ramallah. Ramallah is very close to, uh, you know, to, to Jerusalem. And we were, you know, my family were going to come to America, right? And then when, <laughs> when the Six Day War left, you know, so we all came to America because, and, and the Jews took Jerusalem. And it's okay, we can go and visit and stuff like that, but we, we were not living in Jerusalem anymore. But uh, praise the Lord, God is so full of glory, full of justice, full of just love. Yeah. You know, you feel the love of God, hallelujah, in your heart when you really call upon the name of the Lord, and he will answer you, Amen. you know. He will answer He will lift you up. Yeah. He, the devil brings you down, but the Lord lifts you up. Yeah. And may I say something yeah. here? I feel that somebody here is, you know, just thinking about the devil because he's doing something for him or for her. And the Lord is saying, get over it. You know, because God is God, and he will heal. He will, he will triumph over the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. So, so you, your family are Palestinians, is that right? My family is Palestinian, yeah. yes. Yeah, but you're a Christian now. But you work, you're a Christian. I, I'm a Christian from birth. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about the Israeli people now? Well, I love the Israeli people, you know, I, I, we really do, you, you know, know? And, and as a matter of fact, one of my, uh, you know, uh, one of my brethren uh, is married to a Jewish girl. Right, yeah. So, really, we love the Jews. We love the Jews. We never said, no, we, you know, we don't love you. But, you know, we love God. And uh, I pray that the Jewish people will wake up. That's right to what the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is doing for them. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So right here is the solution. All the conflict. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The moment people are born again, got Jesus in their heart, all that, all that hate and all that hatred goes away. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, her family has suffered loss because of what happened, but there's no bitterness here. Yeah. Amen. But it was really good. You know, because yeah. everybody came at the same time. Yeah. We we had you know like whole uh, the whole family, yeah. about eight people, yeah. and uh, you know, and we came to the, to America, Amen. and we love it in America. You know, and uh, praise God. You know, God answers prayers. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand up for together right now. Let's pray for let's pray for Israel, peace of Jerusalem, but also let's pray for the Palestinian people. And the whole solution is that they'd come to know Jesus, every one of them. Amen. And there are ministers, listen to me, there are ministers in Gaza. There are men and women of God in Gaza. There are men and women of God ministering among the Arabs and among the Palestinians and, and among the Jewish people. The greatest need is for them to have an eye-opening experience, encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for Hilda. Lord, I just lay my hand on her and we pray for the Palestinian people, the Arab people. God, we pray for, the, for the, the labors. Lord, send labors, God. Send men, women of God. The harvest is white, Lord God. Appear to them, Lord, in dreams and visions. Waken them up to the need of a Savior, to Jesus, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. We pray in the name of Jesus. May the effect of this war be a great revival. Be a great revival there in Gaza, Lord, in other areas. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Jewish people. We pray for the nation of Israel. We declare peace. Yeah. We declare peace to Jerusalem. Yeah. Lord, peace to Jerusalem, Lord. God, you remove the oppressors. Amen. May Hamas and Hezbollah be yeah. defeated. Yeah. You remove the oppressors, God, and you restore everything stolen. Lord God, back to the seed of Abraham. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. We bless Israel today. Thank you, Lord, for Israel. Thank you, Lord, for our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.
Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Come, come. come. It's, it's easier to stand that way. Go out the back door. Dwayne will, Dwayne will help you there. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 I, I have to read you one more thing here. I got a, a message from Ken this morning. Many of you know Robin Bertram has been in the hospital for the last few days. You know, that family's really been through a battle. Their son Logan was in the hospital for close to a m- three weeks to a month. And the day he left the hospital, uh, Robin went in. And, uh, and, but let's, let me read this. Uh, Ken writes me. He says, hi, Pastor, sorry for the late timing, but wanted to provide update. In the time between Friday evening and now, and of course, what's been happening since Friday evening and now is, is you guys been praying for her. I've been praying. Pastor Sherry's been praying. We've been praying as a body for her. Amen? We have seen remarkable progress. Now, that's their words. That's the doctor's words. We claim miraculous progress. All areas are showing improvement, and we do greatly appreciate the prayers of healing and as well as prayers for sustaining strength Additionally, Logan, which is their son, is doing, is, is doing well at home. Feel free to share and express our gratitude, Ken, Ken Bertram. Amen. Let's just lift our hands up. Let's pray for Robin and Ken right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you. We're unified here today. We pray for Robin. I thank you for an acceleration and healing, strength into her body. Lord, in Jesus' name, this, 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 this thing, virus, bacteria, whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, we command you, come off of her body. Leave her body in Jesus' name. Come on, let's pray that together in one accord. Say, say Lord Jesus, that thing that has attacked Robin's body, in Jesus' name, we speak to you and we command you, come off of her body. Leave her in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, we praise you that her body is being filled with life and light and your presence in Jesus' name. Your name will be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a shout. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God a shout. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, what, what you saw in the announcements... Pastor David cooking water in a frying pan. Our fast is beginning today. And so we're, we're, we're planning a fast for the next 21 days. Uh, what I'm encouraging everybody to participate at whatever level that you can. Uh, you know, we, we, I, I, I encourage you to fast on water. You know, at least pick periods of time in the, in the 21 days where you commit to commit to fasting and there is we call intermittent fasting where you know you can eat one meal every every 16 hours every 20 hours and eat within that gap and then go back that, that's, that's powerful uh, if you if you have if you have a deep conviction about the Daniel fast as has been interpreted hey that, that's that's between you and the Lord nobody's going to question you about that um, I know some people have said they're going to fast on juice so, I, you know, if you're working a full-time job, obviously there's some challenges there. Uh, but nevertheless, the next 21 days is going to, be, going to be a time of fasting. We're going to emphasize fasting. With fasting, we encourage people. It, fasting is not just not eating. Fasting is spending extra time with the Lord. Amen. It, it's a time of dedication, consecration of ourselves to the Lord. Giving ourselves wholly to Him. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Holy, completely, entirely. Amen. And if you listen to my video the other day, uh, there is that sense. At the beginning of every year, I do that. It's all, this is the way I see it. It's like, it's like I'm taking everything out of my pockets, putting them on the table, and everything, and I'm laying it on the table, and every, everything's on the table. Everything is on the table. You, what do you mean by that? I mean, my life is his. Okay? I'm not going to do, do next year what I did last year, just because I did it last year. Right? That's how you get in ruts. That's how you that's how you that's really how you die. <laughs> Amen. You assume, you just assume presumption. Presumption is the enemy of faith. Amen. So I'm not going to presume anything. Lay it all on the table. I may have thoughts, I may have feelings about what we're going to do and what how I'm going to do it. All that's on the table. Amen. And I just go back to the basics and say, okay, Lord, I'm here before you. I'm here to seek your face next next three weeks. 
time of dedication and consecration, you speak to me, whatever you will. I'm yours to, I'm your, I'm yours to obey. I'm your servant to command. Amen? You command me, I do it. Somebody says, that's dangerous. How can that be dangerous? Amen? He is, he's God. He's my father. He's, he, he's better at planning my life than I am. <laughs> he's got bigger plans than I do, better plans than I do. Amen? Amen. So that's, that's what the fast is all about. Uh, the original sin was eating from a certain tree. <laughs> Amen. The first temptation of Jesus was a temptation to do what? To eat, turn the stones to bread and eat them. So there you go. Um, Jesus fasted. We understand that from the Bible. Uh, we get through the Bible, we see a pattern throughout the Scripture. And we'll talk about that just briefly. Pattern throughout the Scripture of men of God fasting. Moses fasted. Uh, Pastor, Pastor uh, uh, Bethany wrote in the, in the pastor's group me about King Jehoshaphat, great devotion. Go back and read that. Second Chronicle, what is it? Second Chronicle chapter 20, where Israel is facing a, a, a great enemy that outnumbers them, you know, and King Jehoshaphat declared a national fast. They fasted. And then, and then in the middle of that, and that's really the emphasis, and, and I'll show you the pattern here, what, how did God deliver Jehoshaphat and Israel at that time? Second Chronicles chapter 20. He gave them revelation. He gave them a battle strategy. The battle strategy was totally uncommon. It was totally unorthodox. The battle strategy is, the Lord said, I'm going to fight for you. You just, you just sing, send, send the singers ahead of you and just sing and worship me. And the Bible said God set ambushments against the enemy and wiped them out. Amen. So they won victoriously. That revelation came in fasting, right? And when you look at Moses, Moses fasted. Moses fasted for 40 days. And while he was fasting upon the mountain, what happened on the mountain is he got revelation. He got a revelation of the, of the priesthood. He got a revelation of the sacrifices. He got a revelation of the tabernacle. He got a revelation of the law. So when he leaves the time of fasting, he has a revelation. He has something that God has given him to do, not only given him to do, but God gives him the exact pattern by which he's to do it. He's to do it exactly how he saw it during that time of fellowshipping with the Lord. So we're not just, we're not punishing ourselves, you know. This is not punishment. This is not penance. You know, I've seen, you know, the pictures in different countries on, you know, on certain days that, you know, they're followed, they're, there's a procession and some guys have got whips and they're, they're whipping themselves, you know. I mean, even, there are some countries where they even, they even crucify themselves. They like to nail themselves to a cross. No, we're not doing that. That's not what fasting is. Fasting is not penance. Fasting is not us uh, getting God to change his mind. God's, we, some people think, well, God's angry and if I punish myself, he'll get happy. It's not that at all. Amen. It's us. Dealing with our flesh, dealing with our mind, our soul, so that our spiritual nature comes to the forefront. You're, you're pushing down your fleshly nature so that your spiritual nature comes to the forefront, and in that position, you, your, your clarity of hearing is, is, it can become super clear. Amen? And so that's what fasting is. So we're looking for revelation. We're looking for revelation. Amen? Daniel fasted, if you read Daniel chapter 9, chapter 10, both chapters of Daniel 9 and 10, uh, Daniel is fasting in both of, the, both of those chapters, but in chapter 9, he tells why he's fasting. He's fasting because he understood from the Scripture that Jeremiah had prophesied that the captivity would last for 70 years. And Daniel is aware that the end of the 70 years is approaching and nothing looks like it's changing. And so Daniel now begins to fast before the Lord to get understanding. What's, what am I supposed to do? What's getting ready to happen here? And if you read those two chapters, that's exactly what he gets. God begins, Daniel chapter 9 is incredible. The revelation that came to him after his fast about the 70 weeks and, 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 and all of that in Israel. You know, prophetically, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's cornerstone understanding the last days. The chapter 10, Gabriel breaks through, brings the message to 
to, to Daniel. So revelation is what came through fasting. Uh, if we move on, we have uh, the fact that Jesus fasted. I mean, that's to me, that's, that's proof enough. I wouldn't have to find anybody else that fasted. I just find Jesus fasted. Amen? He's my hero. He's my Lord. He's my model. Right? So not only did Jesus, not only did Jesus fast, but Jesus taught on the discipline of fasting. And I'm going to stop for a second here and read a couple of those verses. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and beginning with verse 16. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Jesus says, Moreover, when you fast, moreover what? When you fast, not if you fast, when you fast. When you fast. Jesus here is teaching his disciples. Amen. You get born again. For by grace through faith are you saved, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. I'm saved by grace. Now, having been saved, I'm a follower of Christ. And to be a follower of Christ, I have to discipline myself. And so there are disciplines that are taught in the Scripture. And fasting is a discipline of my flesh. Fasting doesn't make you saved. Fasting doesn't make you righteous. Doesn't make you any more righteous. You're You're no more righteous after fasting than before fasting. Amen. It, again, it deals with your flesh and with your soul. When you fast, do not be like hypocrites of a sad, of a sad countenance, Jesus says, uh, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to, to be fasting. Assured, I say to you, they have the reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, take a shower, take a bath. Hello. What, brush your teeth. <laughs> Rinse your mouth out with, with, with mouthwash. Hallelujah. <laughs> Comb your hair. <clears throat> so that you do not appear to men to fa- be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. So your Father is where? Your Father is in the secret place. And your fasting is done in that secret place, in that place of dedication and consecration to Him. Now, this is a public fast. It's a de- declared fast in the church. So we all know each other is fasting. But at the same time, there's an individual experience of that that's between you and God. Amen? And so it, it's in the secret place. And the Bible says, your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. So in your life, in my life, God, from this scripture and the other two scriptures, we're not going to read right now, but God does not respond to my prayer me publicly God doesn't respond to who I am publicly God doesn't respond to who you are publicly God responds to who you are secretly the father who sees in secret will reward you openly right hello are you with me I mean God sees you all the time so who you are in secret is the real you right you got real quiet on me there who you are in secret is who you really are Amen. It's not, it's not wearing a suit and a tie and a nice, nice, nice shirt and coming to church and smiling and saying hallelujah. God don't respond to that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he responds to who you are secretly. Amen. So secretly, I want to make sure. God says if you fast in secret, your father sees in secret, will reward you openly. So there is an open reward to fasting. So that's where I I encourage you to write down on a piece of paper exactly the reward, the benefit that you're you're seeking during your fast. There are needs in your life. There are things that you are desiring maybe to understand, to know. Uh, There are things that you need physically or financially or family-wise. You want to write those down, right? We're not fasting just to be fasting. We're fasting. We now have a purpose. Number one purpose, just to be with him. Number two, we understand that there's an open reward, and we want that. I want that. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I've, seen, I've seen it where fasting, I've seen it while I was fasting, I've seen it come. Boom. Hallelujah. And then I've seen it where it didn't come for, for you know, it, it, like this is January. Through the course of the year, I've seen, matter of fact, one day, because I write those things down and put them in my Bible, and then one day, time had gone by, and I was reading the Bible, and came upon that little piece of paper in my Bible. This was from a fast from a few years ago, and I read that piece of paper, and everything on there had happened. Everything I had written on that piece of paper had come to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I mean, way back in the beginning of this ministry, I was, we, we were, I don't remember, we were either, either in the middle school or in the, in the rented building, and I was, I, I declared in my own personal heart, I didn't tell the church this, but I declared three days of fasting, I was going to fast because we needed a financial breakthrough because we needed to get out of where we were and buy a new property. On the second day, I was fasting three days. On the second day of that three-day fast, my wife calls me from the post office. Amen. She calls me from the post office, and, all, and her first words is, I've never seen so many zeros. Amen. A businessman who does not attend our church, didn't attend our church, wrote us a check for $50,000. Hallelujah. That was the beginning of the building fund. Until that moment, we had no building fund. There was no money. That went into the building fund, and from that point forward, it's like there was a momentum that took us to where we are right now. Amen? Amen? And now, what's so, what I'm so happy about is now we're giving away 30,000. 30, Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, fasting, fasting, is an assistance to our faith. The enemy of your faith is what? Is your flesh, your feelings, right? Faith is te fasting helps you deal helps you deal with that. Praise God. Na Daniel, excuse me, not Daniel. Matthew chapter nine. Matthew chapter nine, verse fourteen. Matthew chapter nine, verse fourteen. I got a video I'm going to show you here in just a minute. Matthew chapter nine, verse fourteen. Then disciples of John came to him saying, "Why do we and the Pharisees fast often?" but your disciples do not fast. So while the disciples were walking physically with Jesus, they were not fasting. Right? While they were walking physically with Jesus, they were not fasting. Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn? So mourning, Jesus speaks of fasting as mourning. It's a kind of mourning. So when you fast, there, at times, there, 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 there may be a heaviness that comes on you be frank with you, I have felt that heaviness the last few days and I haven't started fasting yet until this morning. Amen? Hallelujah. But that, that's, that's, that, don't feel, oh no, God, oh no, the devil's on me. No, eating on you, your spirit, just something, there's a heaviness. It's part of it, right? Bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them. Now here's the, here's the facts. The facts is Jesus was there physically with Peter, James, and John, and those guys, right? But then he was taken away. Jesus went to heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. So the bride is in a period of mourning. The bride is in a period of mourning. Why are we in a period of mourning? Because our bridegroom has left, is, is in heaven. Now I know he's with us in the spirit, but there's a, there's a separation, right? So we are in a period of mourning. What, what are we longing for? His return. Right? His return. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit will do what? He will comfort those who mourn. How will the Holy Spirit comfort me in the middle of my mourning? He brings the revelation of Jesus. He brings the presence of Jesus. So even though He hasn't physically returned yet, I experience the presence of my Lord in the now. Fasting, I am mourning my absence. I am mourning my absence from Jesus. How many of you get that? Amen. Our bridegroom, we're waiting for his return. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be something? <laughs> if you, if your, your, your husband was not there for a week or two and you just partied the whole time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That wouldn't be cool. You, you'd, be, you'd be happy because they're gone. No, you're not happy because they're gone. You, 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 you sense the, the, the loss, the, 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 the loneliness. Well, spiritually, that's where we are. Amen? It's not a time, it's not a time, it's not a time, it's not a time to be eating. It's a time to be mourning. But in the morning... The Holy Spirit comforts us and He brings to us the tangibility and revelation of the presence of our Jesus for which we long for. He comforts us with that. Right? 
So let's read on. 9, 9, 9 uh, 14. He said, uh, no, 9 15. He said, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come, when the days will come, when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. So he's been taken away. So now's the time to fast. Right? But what I see in that verse is Jesus is with them physically. Peter, James, and on. He's with them physically, and the effect of my fasting is the same. It brings Jesus with me. So it becomes as if it becomes as if he's here. And he is here. But I have a greater revelation, I have a greater awareness of his present tense presence. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 21. These are the words of Jesus. Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Jesus says, and he's talking about the last days. And he's giving us a warning about the last days. Is anybody here in quest that we may be living in the last days? We're we living in the last days. Amen. I can prove it to you by the Bible, but we are. That's not just some hype. That we are living in the last days. Matter of fact, we're in the, we're in the last hours of the last days. Amen. Luke 21, 34, he said, Take heed to yourselves. Beware. Caution. This is a caution. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts... Be weighed down. Lest your hearts be weighed down. Literally, one, one meaning of that word is that you become spiritually dull. Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness, cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. But the word carousing there, uh, one translation says the Weymouth, I don't know if we have Weymouth there, or not, but the Weymouth translation says, but take heed to yourselves, lest your souls, your mind, will, and emotions, lest your souls be weighed down with self-indulgence. Weighed down. In other words, you, can, I, can, I be, can I just be blunt? Overeating suffocates the, your spiritual nature. Just eating, 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 eating. Right? You know, you, you, you get up from the table. You get up on the table from the Thanksgiving meal. Boy, you feel really like praying. <laughs> no, you feel like taking a nap. <laughs> You're going to do a turkey coma. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, not you, but there's some people who live like that. Continuously continuously overeating right now that is that's America friend in which you live not you but the, talking about the world right overeating eating 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 right and some people just don't believe you can skip a meal right Why? All right. Now I got a, I got a little uh, car, Marat sent this, so if you don't like this, you get him. <laughs> but this is fantastic. There's a little cartoon here. I want you to watch this, all right? It was in the box. They've always got food with them. We eat to live. These guys live to eat. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The human mouth is called a pie hole. The human being is called a couch potato. That is a device to summon food. That is one of the many voices of food. That is the portal for the passing of the food. That is one of the many food transportation vehicles. Humans bring the food, take the food, ship the food, they drive the food, they wear the food. That gets the food hot. That keeps the food cold. That, I'm not sure what that is. Ah! Ah! What do you know? Food! is the altar where they worship food. That's what they eat when they've eaten too much food. That gets rid of the guilt so they can eat more food. Food, 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 food! So, you think they have enough? Well, they don't. For humans, enough is never enough. <gasps> and what do they do with the stuff they don't eat? They put it in gleaming silver cans just for us. Oh, Lord, 
that is hilarious. Amen. So Jesus said, <laughs> oh, Take heed to yourselves, lest your souls be weighed down with self-indulgence. So January is a beautiful time to say, okay, we understand that. We, we, you know, God has blessed America, and I'm blessed, and you're blessed. We've got plenty to eat. Amen? And we thank God for that. We, we, we don't despise that. But it's also a time to say, okay, understand that that can get in my way. That can, that can stifle. That can drown out my spiritual sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And so I want to set aside some time for fasting. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, not only did Jesus fast and teach on fasting, Paul fasted. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. he said that he was in fastings often. And again, again, one of the, one of the things that I'm emphasizing here is, is, is revelation. And so in fastings often, you see that he had the revelation from God about the Gentiles and wrote 13 books of the New Testament. And so we want to understand the great need for, for revelation. Fasting, fasting assists us in that, in that way. Say amen. So we want to, we want to, we want to, we want to, we, we want to have that as, 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 as forefront. Now one of, one of the prayer banners we have here, here is called uh, the Spirit of Wisdom and Revelation. And it says, we declare, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. I want to talk about that just for just one second. Um, that prayer that's recorded in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Now, what I'm talking about, we're fasting, but, but we also, time in the Word is vital. Reading the Word, studying the Word, meditating the Word, right? Matter of fact, I want to challenge you. There are 260 chapters of the New Testament, 260 chapters. So between reading and listening, it wouldn't be too hard for you to get the whole New Testament in the next 21 days. You'd have to cover about, about, about 13 chapters a day. You read, you read some, and then on, on the way to work, on the way back from work, you, 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 you know, you get an app. I got an app on my phone where it reads to me the Bible. You can get YouTube. You can look up YouTube, and, it, and there's somebody on there reading the Bible. Amen? And so you can just be in fighting traffic and listening to the Word. Amen? Setting is your, your goal to cover the whole New Testament in the next 21 days. You can do that, right? But our, our prayer is, is the, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. There's a prayer there in Ephesians chapter 1 that Paul gave us. Now, myself, I first heard of, heard of this through, uh, through Brother Hagen back some years ago when I was first beginning the ministry, and I saw that prayer, and I began praying that prayer over my own self. It's found in Ephesians chapter 1. I want you to turn there. I want to talk about that for just a second. Ephesians chapter 1 Paul is, is praying for the church at Ephesus, and he's praying for them. Now, I don't have time to go through this whole chapter. My time is about up. But, but if you go through verses, uh, verse 1 all the way down through verse, uh, th verse 14, you, Paul lists a lot of things that God has already done for us. Verse 3, he blessed us. Verse 4, he chose us. Verse 5, he predestined us. Verse 6, He accepted us in the Beloved. Verse 7, He redeemed us and forgave us. Verse 9, He made us know, he, he made known to us the mystery of His will. Verse 11, We have obtained an inheritance. Verse 13, We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So Paul talks about things that have already been accomplished. So when he gets to his prayer for the people of Ephesians, he's not praying for God to do what God said He had already done. I mean, wouldn't it be something, Paul said, that we're blessed. With, he says, you're blessed with all blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then he prays, oh, God, bless them. Lord, bless them. That would be a contradiction of what he just said. Right? So he's not praying that God would do what God's already done. But what is he praying? He's praying that there would be, through the Holy Spirit, a revelation in the hearts and the minds of those believers of what Christ has already done. Amen? T.L. Osborne said there's one, there, there, there are two prayers that God will never answer. Number one, he will never, he, will never, he will never do what he's already done. And number two, he'll never do what he told you to do. Amen. Number one, he will never answer the prayer where you're asking him to do what he, told, what he said he already did. Right? I don't need him to do again what he's already done. I need revelation on what he's done. 
I need spiritual insight, understanding of what he's already done. Right? So, so how do you pray this prayer? Well, I'm going to give you just some practical guidance here. I'm telling you, when I first learned this prayer, and I was just starting in the ministry, I started praying this prayer. I started confessing these truths, declaring these truths over my life. Where I was then and where I am now is, is, is two different worlds. Right? I started in a place where I knew practically nothing. I knew practically nothing. I had some Bible knowledge, but I had no insight into Christ, what Christ has done, what Christ has accomplished, and who I am in Christ. I had no, no insight into that at all, period, none, zero. Amen? And so I began, I began praying that prayer faithfully. I prayed that prayer every single day, every single day. I prayed it every day of my life. Well, it wasn't long until I'm telling you, I started getting some serious downloads. I started to get some serious revelation. I started reading the Bible, and I was reading it like I'd never read it before. I was seeing things I'd never seen before. Amen? And it wasn't long, it wasn't long to where I was not in sync. I was not walking in sync with the people that I was going to church with. They were teaching things that I knew weren't right. They were saying things I knew didn't add up. Amen? And so all of a sudden, I'm a misfit. I don't fit in here anymore, and then I had to, I had, God had to, had to, you know, move me on a little bit. Amen? Well, it's better to move on than dry up with all them people there. They didn't dry it up. Amen? They didn't dry it up. <laughs> amen? Come on, say amen. Amen. So, here's the way God taught me to do it, right? First thing I do, are you with me? First thing I do is I read it out loud just like it says. Right? Verse 16. I'm going to read it out loud. Do not cease to give thanks for you, Paul says, making mention of you in my prayers. Here's the prayer, verse 17. At the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Now, let's stop right there. You want to read it to yourself out loud. Lester Summerall said, when he reads the Bible, he's past the heaven now, great man of God, when he read the Bible, he always read it out loud. He didn't just read it in his mind. You can read it in your mind. But Paul, uh, Lester Sarmal said he always read it out loud. Why? There's something to speaking the word out loud in, in your room, in your life, in your house, in your car. You, you're, you're speaking it. He said, I read it out loud. So you're going to read it out loud. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Who's him? Jesus. So I always put Jesus there. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Now stop right there. So the spirit of wisdom and revelation is going to cause the eyes of my understanding to be enlightened so that I will what? Know. So that I will what? Know. Charles Price wrote a book entitled The Real Faith. One of these are old men of God. The real faith. Real, the real faith is not believing. The real faith is knowing. Believing is only a transition. It's a transitionary period until you come to knowing. You ask me, Pastor, are you saved? And I say, well, I believe I am. I'm believing I'm saved. I'm believing I'm saved. I don't know. I don't get it. Amen. These things are written, 1 John 5, 13, that you might know that you have eternal life. I know I'm saved. I know I'm forgiven. I know that I have eternal life. I know it. Well, how do you know it, Pastor? I got a revelation. I got a witness. The Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. So it's a knowing. So somebody said, I'm believing for healing. I'm believing for prosperity. I'm believing for my family. Listen, you're in a transitionary period and the Holy Ghost through revelation wants to bring you into a place of knowing. 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 And when you know, you get out of the boat. Amen. Peter wasn't standing there on the boat confessing, I can walk on water. I can walk on water. I just know I can. I walk on water. I can walk on water. No. He wasn't doing that. Nothing wrong with confessing, but confessing sometimes is, is, is you, you helping yourself to believe. Faith comes by hearing. You're hearing yourself. Amen? 
But the goal is, is, is beyond believing. The goal is knowing. Such as I have. Such as I believe I have. Such as I have. Give I unto you. You think Peter was believing at the gate called beautiful? Or did he know? He knew. <laughs> Amen. So the spirit of wisdom revelation does his work. So the eyes of our understanding is being enlightened. And the fact is that the, the effect of it is, is that you may know. That you may what? Know. That I may know. And the moment you know, you become as bold as a lion. Amen. Glory to God. What are you going to know? There are three things that are listed here. Number one, what are the riches of the glory? No, no, no. First one is that you might know what is the hope of his calling. Number two, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And number three, that you might know, next verse, that you might know what is exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Okay. So, so I read that out loud. Now, I, I'm not going to do it, but I'll read it all the way to the end of the, ver- end of the chapter. I'll read it all the way to the end of the chapter. Okay. Now, I've read it out loud. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to confess it as true and I'm going to personalize it in my own life. Okay? Father, I thank you that you have already given me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. The eyes of my understanding are being enlightened that I might know. I know. Lord, I thank you that I know. I know what is the hope of your calling. What is the riches of the glory of your inheritance in me, one of your saints. I thank you, Lord, that I know what is exceeding greatness of your power to me, word who believes, according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ. And when you set him, when you raised him the dead, set him at your right hand, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, every name that is named. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that prayer for myself. And I pray in the scripture. Listen, the greatest thing for every person here to learn in in 2024 is learn how to pray the word. Is learn how to declare and confess the word over your own life. Amen. And this is what, what I'm showing you. So you read it out loud. Then having read it out loud, then you go back over it and you change the pronouns and you take change the tenses of the verbs. And you, you make it personal for you now. Amen. So it becomes a, perf- listen, a promise of the Bible, when believed, becomes a prophecy. Hmm. A promise in the Bible, when believed, becomes a prophecy over your life. God told me, God told me, Amen. That he gave me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. When did he tell you? Right there in my Bible. Amen. The moment I believed that, that became a prophecy. And that prophecy is a more sure word of prophecy than the greatest man of God in the world prophesying over me. Amen. Peter called it a more sure word of prophecy is when you take the, prof- the promise of the Scripture and you believe it, it becomes a prophecy over your life. Hallelujah. So I want to learn how to pray that. Now, there's a lot of things God wants to do in your life. A lot of things God wants to do in my life. A lot of things God wants to do in this church. But most of what you need God to do is answered in this prayer. Many times the hang-up of why we haven't seen the fulfillment is this, it's because, it's because there's insight I lack. The entrance of his words gives light. There's some insight that I need. Right? Sometimes it's small. It's just a little change of perspective. A little shift. Everything. It's everything. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The entrance of his word gives light. There is is enlightenment, and then there is impartation. With enlightenment comes impartation. The moment you are enlightened through the word by the Holy Spirit, there will be an impartation of the faith of God. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Now, 
So that's, the, that's, that's, that's one of the prayers you're going to pray during your time of fasting. That's the one thing you're, that's that, man, you're after that. I got the Holy Spirit. I want the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I got some areas in my life that, that just aren't, aren't what they ought to be. Maybe big stuff, maybe small stuff, whatever. Well, I need some revelation here. I need some insight, right? It's never, it's never God's fault. Never God's fault. It's always, I'm always, I'm always, if there's any shortfall here, it's me. Hello. Always. Always. Let me say, well, why hadn't God done that yet? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't look God's direction. I think you ought to work on yourself, right? That's my approach. So you, you have your own. That's my approach. Amen. Lord, you got to work on me here. I got to get, I got to, I got to have some answers. I got to have some answers. And I could, I could give you testimony for testimony for testimony that over the years, God has, has shaken me with, with, with insight. Some of it I should have already had, but I didn't have it. Some of it's come just as I read the Bible. Some of us came as I was just doing something else. <laughs> Amen. And boom, it came. Others of it came in a dream about the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. But knowing comes. And when knowing comes, you're never the same again in the area of your life. Never the same. It's as solid as that concrete floor. Or hallelujah. You're not... Just not just you know not just spiritual or you're, you know those substance <laughs> it's solid you know it I know it hallelujah hallelujah amen now it, this is different this is different than begging God oh God please oh God oh God stop you wasting your time amen let me tell you something I know about God God ain't listening to that. Now, God can hear everything, but he ain't listen to that. He, 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 didn't, he didn't turn his ears off. Amen? You're not a beggar. You're a son. You're a daughter. Amen? What we need to learn is how to take his word and begin to confess and declare it over our life so that revelation comes. Revelation comes. Amen? And then we go on here in this, this prayer, on this, this prayer banner, Matthew 13, 16. And it's a declaration, Lord, you have given us every, you've given, you've given us every person in Cornerstone. We say three things. You've given me eyes to see, you've given me ears to hear, and a heart to know. Thank you, Lord. You've given me eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to know. Right? I hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. Are you a sheep? Are you a lamb? Yes. So that should be your declaration. I hear the voice of God hear his voice I know his voice amen don't don't let the don't let the devil tell you oh you just don't hear the voice of God don't that, that, you, you need to know that's the devil that's the that is a spirit of religion spirit of religion you're a Christian but you don't know the voice of God that my friend is a lie I you may say it louder again that is a lie you are a child of God you're, he's your shepherd. You're, you're a sheep in his, his, his fold. You know his voice. And you hear his voice. Everybody say with me. Say, I know his voice. And I hear his voice. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's raise our hands together right now. Everybody stand up on your feet. Raise up both hands. Raise up, raise up both hands. Say, Lord, right now. I'm asking you to give to me the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that the eyes of my understanding is being enlightened so that I might know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, that's in me, one of your saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of your power that's toward me? Thank you, Jesus, which is, which is the same power 
that raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up both hands. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 The spirit of seeing. The spirit of hearing. I declare for you that you will see like never before. I declare for you that you will hear like never before. I declare for you that you will know. You will know. You'll have a heart to know. You'll have a heart that knows. You'll have a heart that knows. <laughs> have a heart that knows. Hallelujah. 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 A heart that knows. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I just feel like we just ought to keep our hands up just for a few more moments. Just loving and worshiping Jesus. Loving and worshiping Jesus. Whoa, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Blessing and honor and worship. Blessing and honor and worship. Blessing and honor and worship. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say that this is a season. It's a season of promotion. It's a season where He's calling us up. He's calling us up. And that in this house, there are people that are going to step into a new place. It's a higher place. A place you've never been in before. And you're going to hear the voice of the Lord. You're going to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit like never before. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The season of promotion. The key to your stepping into that promotion is hearing and seeing. Hearing and seeing. Hearing, seeing, and knowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, hallelujah. 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 The Lord says it may be a shaking. There will, will, will be a shaking in the world. But you will be strong. You will stand fast. Because the strength of revelation, <laughs> the strength of knowing is a firm foundation. The wind may blow, the rain may fall, and the floods may come, but you're built upon a revelation. You're built upon a knowing, a knowing, a knowing, a knowing of His Word. A knowing of His Word. A knowing of His Word. And while others may shake like a leaf in the wind, you'll stand tall. You'll stand tall like a mighty oak. Hallelujah. Bearing fruit. Bearing fruit all year long. All season long. In the next season too. <laughs> Hallelujah. More and more. More and more. More and more. More and more. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you want special prayer today, whatever the need is, spiritual, physical, whatever, then I just want you to come right now. Our prayer team, myself, will be here to pray with you. If you'd like special prayer today, I just want you to step out of your seat and just come. Thank you. That's awesome. Amen. Come on. Just come on. We got some. Oni, Oni needs to come up here. We need to pray over you because you're getting ready to go to Kenya. Come up. Come up. Al, you want to help her up? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Pastors, come up here with me. Praise the Lord. Oni's headed to Kenya. This is your last Sunday before you leave, right? I leave this Friday. 
leave it on Friday. Somebody get me some oil. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray for everybody. Everybody else that has needs, come on out. We're going to get to you too. But everybody's getting ready to leave. And so I want us to pray over Oni before, before, we, before we make transition here. Praise the Lord. How are you, sir? God bless you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Everybody stretch your hand this way. Hey, Parma, bless you, sir. Amen. Stretch your hand this way. Praise the Lord. We're praying. No evil shall befall her. No plague will come nigh our dwelling. God's given angels charge over her to keep her, to guard her to, in all of her ways. And the hand of the Lord is upon her life. Hallelujah. She'll open her mouth and speak things that will set people free. Hallelujah. That God gives you words from heaven, words whereby people are saved, words whereby people are healed, words whereby people are delivered. Father, I anoint, I anoint Oni with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost that burns in her life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your word in her mouth will be like a fire, will be like a burning fire, and the people will be like wood. You'll, they'll be set on fire because of the words that you declare over their life. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's all step down here to in the front here, and we're going to have our, our prayer team to pray over everybody. Praise God. A prayer team, just get ready. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You guys want prayer, just step forward. Just make me a line right here. The Lord gave me this word a couple of weeks ago. And, and he just keeps saying, release it, release it, release it now. The Lord says, I'm raising up great leaders from this body. This is a time of honing skills and gifts to perfection in me. There are those who will be trained here and then leave this place to carry the message to other areas. Do not be concerned when my ministers come and go. You are a crucial part of my plan in these last days. Equipping will flow from this body, but first you must be equipped. Draw into the secret place with me and let my spirit work in you. Do not be concerned with the outward move. That's easy once the inward cleansing and firming up has been done. Each of you play a role. Do you not realize that I have no insignificant children? All are called to the very same purpose, but there are many ways to carry out that purpose. What is yours? Do you know? Have you even asked of me what you are to do? You are not a placeholder in the kingdom. You are a mighty warrior, and I want you to see yourself that way. This land requires your boldness in order to carry the true word to the lost and dying. Hear what I'm saying to you today. Do not dismiss these words. It's not just a call to action. It's, a, it's much more than a call. It's a command. As my followers, it is up to you to be my voice and my feet. My spirit dwelling within you will lead you if you will surrender. The call and the command is going forth across the lands. My children everywhere are responding as I gather and equip my remnant with fire. Will you be among them? Amen. Let's lift our hands up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's equipping us with fire. Amen. He's clothing us with fire. Okay. Let's make a line here. Then we're going we're gonna to start praying. Come, come, sir. Just stand just for here. That's right. That's, that's good. Yeah. Come, 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 come. Come, come. That's right. 